Hi oh, YouTube, how are we all doing? Hello again. Wow, <laughs> the sun's shining. It's becoming a theme, this, isn't it? <laughs> well, I've been playing about with the settings on this camera, and uh, I thought the sun's shining. Let's come and try it. Tried the. Uh, the sharpness in uh, high detail to see if that makes a difference. So what that looks like. So anyway, I thought, yeah, great. The sun is shining. It's bright. Let's see if I can uh, get out for an hour. Besides, I've not, I've not really used the bike much. Been out a couple of times. So it's. Uh, nice to get out and I thought I'd have a little chat anyway about about the uh, NT I'm getting on with it anyway we'll have a chat after the intro Hello folks, hello, how are we all doing? Uh, the sun's shining so I thought, you know what, let's, let's get out and have a little uh, ride. Uh, what time are we on now? We've got quarter to four uh, on a Thursday evening. Got good Friday tomorrow. I thought I'd finish work. Let's get out for an hour. <laughs> Just as I said that. The sun's gone beyond that dirty big cloud over there. It's still bright though. So anyway, um, I've been happy with the GoPro. And I think uh, a lot of you folks out there are saying that the... You know, the, the, the quality's better. And you're happy with it. Must admit, I have been really impressed with it, to be fair. Um, I've had a few questions about the NT. I've had a couple of questions about the sat-nav, uh, so I thought, well, what I'll do, I'll do a little video. I'll tell you about uh, what I'm using, because I'm getting also, I'm getting a few questions on what's going on. So anyway, yeah, first of all, I've had a couple of questions on my sat-nav. A few people ask me what sat-nav do I use, um, how you power and it, that type of thing. So. Satnav itself uh, is a, a Garmin Zumo XT. So, uh, allegedly one of the flagship uh, Satnavs. So, uh, been very pleased with it actually. It's got all the uh, bells and whistles on it. Not that I'd use half of them, mind, I'm going to point out. So, um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a blooming good little system. Um, now, when I have noticed on the, the Zumo XT, is when I use the GPX files, evening sir, that is an old Deville. Uh, it works really well with Ray's um, Tom Tom, he's got a Tom Tom rider. Now, when I had the old BMW Nav 7, it always tried to take me a different way to what Ray's sat nav was taking him on. Which is, you know, one of those things, it happens. But, uh, those sort of awkward things but this one every time I've used it it's um who's he beeping up every time I've used it it's minted it perfectly which to be honest with you is a, a, a good thing when it comes to uh riding especially on a tour because there's nothing worse than having your sat navs not lining up especially if you get split up and this happens just a few times where we have been split up gone out of comms range his sat navs told him to turn left and mine's told me to turn right <laughs> that unfortunately does happen so anyway yeah Garmin Zumo XT and uh, now I've had a couple of questions about how have I got it wired up so 
when I bought the bike, um, Honda said to me, you know, we'll fit your sat-nav for you. Uh, however, the, the, the sat-nav didn't come until after I picked up the bike, so um, it was a bit late to do it before I picked up the bike. So they did it on the first service for me, and they've hardwired it into the uh, bike. Um, I'm a sh Well, from what I can see, they've gone into the fuse box, so they will have wired it into Switch Live or one of those anyway. So when you turn the ignition off, like anything else on the bike, it's completely dead. So it's completely wired in, it's hardwired into the system. Um, makes life a lot easier. Oh, can we see what's going on around here? Can we clear? Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's completely hardwired into the system. Now, that's great. Absolutely fantastic. It means that when you park your bike up at night, you're not worrying about, you know, um, are we... Uh, you know, we're going to flatten the battery. Please, please do not pull out. Thank you. Oh, you're going to flatten the battery. I haven't got. To, don't necessarily have to worry about one or a power pack, that type of thing. You know, into the tan bag, etc. So that's the sat nav. Um, when you buy the Garmin Zoom XT, it comes with all the mounts, etc. And see, I took one look at it and I was going to start wiring it all in. Anyway, cut a long story short. Um, Honda said they'd do it for me. Perfect. So that's the sat nav. Garmin Zumo XT. I think I paid 300 and something quid to pay for it. Not cheap, don't get me wrong, you know, but for a bike, sat nav, it's ideal. It does what it says on the tin. You've got your usual sort of uh, route you can plan in there. Um, that, that type of, you know, the usual type of stuff you can you can put in, you know, but uh, overall it's not uh, it's not a bad little system. So that's the sat nav. So I hope it's uh, hope it's helped you out a little bit. Uh, so the bike, uh, the NT. Well, what can I say about the NT? Quite a lot actually. Um, I'm still getting a lot of stick off the lads regarding the uh, DCT. <laughs> I keep trying to tell them it's not an automatic, but you know, you can imagine the stick I'm getting. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, I went out with Ray the other week for a ride, and he looked at the uh, button on the. <laughs> he looked at the button of the bike. He says, "Oh, look at that! Manual mode and A for automatic." So, yep, I got a bit of stick on that. <laughs> and I know he'd be watching. I know he'd be laughing at that one. Um, ooh, bit of water here. I've not been down here before, by the way, folks, so it's, uh, just looking at some of the roads and the sat and thinking I can go that way. Anyway, um, the NT, plenty of power. Getting about 60 to the gallon. And I've done a lot of town riding this, on this, and it's saying 57.5, but on average I'm getting 60 to the gallon on a run, which is not bad for 1100 to be fair. Um, now which way are we going to go here by the way? Which way do I go? Let's go left. we we'll go up here, I don't know what the hell's up here like, but we'll go up here anyway. Well that looks nice, whatever that is. The weed chief. I always wanted to know where that place was. Interesting. Where, where are we? Yeah, anyway, sorry I digressed. So, yeah, uh, plenty of power in the NC, the 1100. Plenty of, plenty of power. Uh, 60 to the gallon. The tyres I've got at the moment to what was uh, on when I bought the bike, when I got it brand new. They're the uh, Dunlop uh, Road Smarts, fives, I think four or fives, I think they are. Not a bad tyre. Um, not as good as my Pilot Roads, I'll be honest with you. Don't think they were as good as the Pilot Roads anyway. But um, they've not been bad. Uh, but other than that, it's fine. Um, I've had a, quite a few people ask me about the screen. 
uh, the storage it's been pretty good to be fair you know there's uh, the screen itself is great gives you a fair, fair amount of protection I've got it set currently at uh, one one position from the top so it will go up a bit further I just like to look over the screen a little bit you know uh, so there's that uh, these little wind deflector things down here they're pretty good to be fair they do sort of give you you know that that extra little bit of uh, protection especially in the winter seat and wise comfy as hell you know I'm, I'm not joking it is so comfy so comfort wise it's great for the Tora absolutely fantastic uh, power wise brilliant mirrors mirrors are brilliant um, what can I say <laughs> I can see out the back of them there's not much to say on mirrors really they do the job and they're pretty good to be fair the luggage isn't as good as the um, oh, look at this one, it isn't as good as the, as the, the RT was now, as I say, the, the boxes are a little bit smaller. The top box is a, a similar size. It's 50-odd litre. I think the RT was a 55 litre or 60 litre box. So, it's, it's, it's give or take, you can get a similar amount in there. But the panniers, in fairness, folks, are a little bit smaller. In saying that, I still managed to get a week's worth of gear in without using my Lomo bag. So, you know, there's that was a bonus. But overall, um, the, the panniers are just a tad smaller. And it's a shame, really. I think Honda have missed a trick there. They should have just made that a little bit bigger. Um, the other thing, the, as I, I love the bike, the other thing Honda have missed a trick on is the chain drive. Why they didn't put a shaft drive in this, I do not know. Um, you know, all their tours, you know, if you think back, the, 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 the Panyoro, the ST1100 and the ST1300 uh, the Deville when they had the 650 and the 700 out um, you know the Goldwing they were all shaft drive and the, you know the Goldwing itself I me mean, what can I say it's just a, an amazing bike not everybody's taste not everyone's cup of tea don't get me wrong uh, but it's still a beautiful bike um, so why they didn't put a shaft drive in this I do not know uh, that would have really been, you know, would have, would have been ideal, really, considering the bike has been sold as a Tourer. But I think what they've done is they've they've decided to, uh, you know, develop a new bike using technology on a bike they've already got. Because this is heavily based on the Africa Twin. You know, it's... Um, oh, it's, a bit it's basically is the... You know, it, it, it basically is the Africa Twin. Um with a comfier seat, a bit more plastic around it. Other than that, it's the same bike. So, um, they've cut corners a little bit to try, to try and save a bit of money and, uh, you know, just make, make it easier to get the, the bike out, I suppose. But other than that, it is a fantastic bike. It's just a shame it hasn't got a shaft drive. It would have made a little bit of sense, especially now they spent all that extra money on the DCT. You know, uh, and the technology behind the DCT. Because it is an amazing system. It really is an amazing system. I'm quite impressed of it, to be fair. But other than that, the NT is a one hell of a bike. You know, it's uh, a lot of people like it. Some people love it. You know, there's an old saying, you cannot please... You know, you can't please everybody. Um... You know, it's a shame, really. But, uh, you know, it'll sell well. I think it'll definitely sell well as a bike. You know, it's, uh, I've seen a few of them out now. I mean, I've done, what, 4, 000, nearly 4,700 miles. <laughs> You're going to watch the miles grow in this, aren't you? <laughs> but no, I've done 4,700. Getting close to the 5,000 now. You know, so uh, it, it's it's doing all right. I mean, the NT, I uh, say the um, the RT. If I'd have, uh, oh, he's turning. Thank you. The RT would have been, a, you know, more reliable. I'd have kept it. 
I think I'd still be riding the RT today. Um, it's a shame because it was an absolute lovely bike when it worked. <laughs> when it failed on you, that was the problem I had with it. So yeah, uh, in saying that, I mean, I did have an issue with this. I'll, in fact, I'll talk about that actually because I've had a few people ask me how it's running now. So yeah, anyway. The, N the, the NT, when I first got it, it worked great up to its first service, up to about a thousand mile. Absolutely spot on. Then, um, started to develop some starting issues. Great when it was cold. The minute the engine warmed up, wouldn't start. Take about four or five goes to start it. And if you actually look at our Luxembourg tour, you'll see all the issues I had. Anyway, went back in for its recall, and we were kind of hoping there was a... When we were weighing a holiday, we got a letter through to say we'd been a recall over some engine stalling, and it was affecting the DCT, so I thought, great, there's the issue. Took it in, and I know a few other people have got the NTs, um, they had a similar problem. Fine. Anyway, anyway I had the, the work done on it, a couple of weeks later. <laughs> Did it again. So it went back in, said, look, it's still doing it. And they, they had it for three weeks, I think it was. Could they find the fault? Could they hell is like? In the meantime, I got a message off another guy in the uh, Czech Republic, I think he was. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, had the Africa Twin, brand new Africa Twin, exactly the same fault. By chance, uh, Smith's Honda, when I took it back to, which is a part of Bill Smith's in Chester, anyone who doesn't know that. Just as we were about to give mine back, <laughs> telling me there was no, you know, there's obviously no fault in mine. And I've lost me, lost me eyes, there you go. Telling me there was no fault with mine. Um, they got this uh, Africa Twin in, exactly the same fault. So anyway, with a bit of uh, bit of wiggling and so forth with uh, Honda, they dis they discovered that the switch was short now. Now whether it was water ingress, I don't know. Uh, bad contacts, whatever. Anyway, they decided to change the whole of this uh, this switch cluster. Obviously, from my point of view, you can't really tell the difference, but when I first picked up the bike after the work was done, there was a slight discoloration. You could slightly tell it was um, a new model, but I, mean, to be, I can't really notice now. It's been washed a couple of times. So, yeah, um, that, was the, that was that. That was that worked. But, yeah, it was interesting. Anyway, yeah. So, decided to just pull over for a minute. There she is. The NC. So, she is, she's running absolutely lovely. Sounds lovely. Uh, be on you some. Listen to that, folks. Doesn't that sound gorgeous? So, yeah, that's the NC. Been pleased of it. It's uh, 12 months old in June. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about the sniffing. Still got this cold. Yeah, she's uh, 12 months old in June. So the only thing I've done to it is I've put a radiator guard on it. Probably can't see that because <sighs> the radiator is just a, uh, a little. It's just a little bit exposed. The radiator. So I decided to put a guard on it. But yeah, um, overall, absolutely made up. Really, am made up of the bike. Uh, this this comfy seat's amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Top box, as I say, fifty liter top box. The panniers, I haven't got them on today, but the panniers, I say, are okay. They could do have been just a little bit bigger. But overall, you know, it's uh, it's fine. But she does. I mean, this this Africa twin engine, you know sounds absolutely amazing um, I've got the oh, little mark, couple of marks on that Ooh. please tell me I've not got oh it's only a bit of muck anyway the spotlights I 
haven't really used them, to be fair. Uh, I should should use them, really. I've just not had a real chance to. When we were in uh, in Luxembourg, I think I had them on one day. But other than that, I've the headlights themselves, when they're on full beat, you know, on the normal night night time, these LEDs are amazing. You don't really need the spots on, but, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, anyway, that's it really, folks. Uh, I just wanted to sort of uh, do a bit of a walk around. She's a bit dirty, bless her heart. She could do with a clean. So the back wheel's caked in crap, as usual. As I was out in it last week, so it could, it, it does, it could do with a bloody good clean, to be fair. It's absolutely rotten again. It's just dust. But that's it, folks. Um, Tyres, these are the Dunlop, Dunlop Road Smarts. Um, they've done it, so they've done getting coming on to about 5,000. They're starting to show signs of squaring a little bit, but that's to be expected on a 5,000 mile uh, tyre. I've noticed it's starting, I've got about a mil, a mil and a half left on the top part of it where the, uh, the limit is, so they will need to be changed and I will be changing them before we go to Europe in August, so uh, they'll get a new set of tyres on. But yeah, oh, yeah. Anyhow, so that's really it, folks. Um, I thought I'd give you a bit of a walk around. I've not really done a proper walk around on it uh, since I've had the bike, really. Apologies for that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm uh, going to go a little ride. I found these country lanes the other day and I thought, you know what, these look absolutely amazing. So the back lanes of the will. These are roads I've, up until the other day I'd never been down. Um, so it's quite good, really. Uh, and I thought, why not, eh? Sun's shiny, why not get out? And have a little nose. Let's have a play with the camera again, as I normally do, just to try and get used to it. But I just love these country lanes, you know, it's... Uh, you poodle on 25.30, see all the scenery. I, mean, we'll, I know you can't see much because of the hedges, but uh, over to our left we've got uh, North Wales. But this is, uh, I think this is Little Ness, I think it's called. Beautiful place, lovely. So, so I found this the other day when I'd uh, come for a ride. Sadly, the camera wasn't running. <laughs> I thought it was a press record and I hadn't. That's a good advert, isn't it? It's a lovely area, though. Beautiful area. So lucky, actually. I've got some nice little villages right on my doorstep. It's great. So that's really it on the NT, really. Um, been really pleased with it. Yeah, she's had the niggles, you know, teeth and problems. But done all bikes, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> every bike has its teeth and problems, doesn't it, you know? And it's, um, it's just a shame, really. But yeah, it's it's run absolutely blooming brilliant. I said, they just, the, the only issue I really had was the... Um, the starting issue when we were in uh, Luxembourg, but other than that, spot on. The other thing I like about this is you can do um, on this, you can do exactly the same as you can do on the uh, on the Africa Twin. Stand straight up and have a look what you where you're going. Absolutely brilliant. If you need to, you can stand up, have a good look round. So it's it's got the feel of a feel of the adventure bike, but. Um, the comforts of a tourer. Not that I'm an adventure rider by any means. You know, I don't even like gravel, so I'd be no good at any of the adventure stuff. <laughs> but look at there, folks. I found this the other day. Isn't that absolutely blooming gorgeous? What a lovely view. See, this is the River Dee. Uh, we're looking at on the on the Whittle, D side of the Whittle Peninsula, looking out into North Wales. 
this all obviously all was river at one point but over the years it's silted up you know and a lot of marshland here now but that the uh, folks that's amazing isn't it absolutely blooming amazing See if we can get down here. We can't obviously can't go all the way down. But that looks beautiful, doesn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Anyway. Into oh, go at the end, I'll see what's at the bottom. Not been down here. If you're gonna have a nose. I can't go down there, eh? Private access road only. Folks, look at that. That's your, uh, that's the River Dee. I mean, originally you would have all got uh, water right up to here. Originally, many, many years ago. But the water's quite a way out now. Shows you how the land, landscape's uh, changing over the years. Yeah, it's, uh, Strange, really. Anyhow, let's go and see what else we can find. But yeah, I found this road by accident last week, uh, so sadly I wasn't filming. But yeah, it's a lovely little area. Lovely. We've got a horse box. You're going to do well to get him in there, pal. Anyway, folks, that's it. Um, short and sweet short and sweet episode today nothing fancy I thought, I thought you know what the sun's shining, I'll come out I thought I might as well show you that little road at the same time anyway until next time folks thanks very much for watching see you again now, see you